Hey, welcome back everyone. We're here live in Silicon Valley for the Open Networking Summit 2014, hashtag ONS 2014. This is theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the events, extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of Silicon Valley. I'm joined by my co-host Scott Rainovich from the Reno Report, analyst on theCUBE, uh, and Kelly Wanzer, CEO of Stateless Networks. Welcome to theCUBE. Thank you. First time on theCUBE. Great to see you, you're, you're awesome. Uh, Vanessa. Already I'm awesome, yeah, thank Van you. Friend of Vanessa, who's a Clutterati. Okay. Uh, as a friend of, awesome. friend of ours, and uh, we met at uh, Open Compute, uh, and then the OpenStack event in the um, uh, Computer History Museum. We didn't, couldn't get you on theCUBE, but we got you on now. Thank you. So welcome, tell us about the company. It's a startup, you guys are innovating in the space. We love talking about startups. You got the old incumbents, you got the new incumbents, yeah. trying to survive, and, and then you get the startups, which are, you, you're running one of them as the founder. Tell us about Stateless Networks and what you guys do. So it's a fantastic time to be a startup in networking. So you have this big transformation happening in the biggest, most critical part of the infrastructure. And, you know, I come from a different space. So I came into networking from messaging infrastructure and security. Do I need to lean No, you can leave that there, it's fine. So I came into the space from somewhere else and I came into networking uh, originally looking at the challenges of big data infrastructure and you know, sort of, sort of hit on the fact that there was a combination of a bottleneck in the network when you try to deploy big scale out systems and this uh, shift happening in networking technologies where a network was moving from hardware appliances to software and the software was disaggregating between the physical network operating system which was becoming open and a virtual layer which was going to which is going to lift the network up and make it really agile and flexible and elastic. And so seeing this happening and saying, well, what's needed to operate and manage a network like this? And so from my point of view, we came in and we started working on this problem of, well, you have this new type of physical network that's coming, and you have this new type of virtual network that's coming, and it envisions a software layer that operates it and uses intelligence coming from the network to operate this, and it doesn't exist. And so we started working with uh, the first vendors who were doing open network operating systems, Arista, and we put a, a software agent on the, on the box, and we started to take feedback from the network to use it to drive. Well, Jay Shree, she's been on the cube. She's an innovator. Yeah, they were one that she was doing a startup when it was hard. She actually was telling us <laughs> when she started Arista, you couldn't get oh, any money for I networking. Yeah, well, you know, back in the day. Well, but, yeah, but to, to be fair to her and, and their team, I mean, you have Andy Beckelsheim, you have Ken Duda, you know, you have some of the geniuses of networking. They had a lot of dough. So, um, so they had, you know, so they they had. But they had a really great technical vision of where things are going. And now you see um, it, folks in, you know, because really where it's going is about, you know, this open Linux kernel based networking underlay. And then you have this, this virtual network overlay on top. And so the vision is I have a, a simpler network underneath and it's automated. And it's, it's operating very smoothly. And if something happens, you know, it works like an assembly line and everything's good. And on top of that, you have a lot of the brains, a lot of the richness, a lot of the flexibility that comes from letting people running applications say, look, I need some bandwidth. I want to bring these applications online and I can click to do that. And that's awesome. So are you guys targeting developers? So who's your target audience? Are you selling a box? Is it software? Is it SaaS? Is it So we're going to we're going to say something a little bit different than you see in the cloud world. I'm going to say my target is the network operator. And what I want to do is bring to the network operator the visibility and the power and the control of these new model networks. I want to say to you, you know what? I know you guys in network operations and network engineering, you're there. You keep the lights on. Right? And, and you've, you've operated the network in one way. You've optimized against fairly static technology. And you've done an awesome job. Now we're going to give you better technology. But we realize that you need to have high visibility and a high degree of control because you guys are, you are the, the, the bulwark of security, of compliance, of keeping the lights on. What's the psychology so, of the network operator right now? I just don't know, so I'm asking. Is it, are they feeling like I've been battled down, I'm tired, I'm irrelevant, I'm being worked to the bone, I'm being consolidated? Or they, do they feel more I'm refreshed? I'm not Amazon. You know, or, they yeah. feel, or, do they, or do they feel like empowered, like the future's mine, the world's spinning in my doorstep? What, what's your take on, on these guys? Are so, you giving them an aspirin? Are you giving them a new weapon, all the above? So my experience is it actually starts to separate out that there are different kinds. 
And so you, you meet the guys who are energized and they're like, I'm going to learn Perl, I'm going to learn Ruby, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to become a network developer and it's exciting. And there's never been a more exciting time to be in networking, maybe ever, or maybe since the 80s, early 80s. And, and so you get some guys who are very energized and they've got, you know, one of the banks we work with, they've got a team of guys and they have coding books and data books and they're, and they're really energized. And then you have some guys who are really nervous and they've got these models that they're using to operate and they don't see how to translate them. And they're worried. They, you know, they carry pages, they know the requirements they need to meet and they don't necessarily see how it's going to work. And then you have the guys who are worried for their jobs. But Scott, I want to so, get Scott in here. Scott, you sorry, tell, tell sorry, No, no, it's okay. He's, yeah. he's, he's, he's to analyze and, and right. critique. What's your take on that? So, a startup, do you agree well, it's the best well, time to be curious, a startup? I'm curious how you got into this business because a lot of people spend their time trying to get out of you know, telecom. <laughs> but the, uh, apparently, I've never succeeded, but that's okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you, you are a serial entrepreneur, a serial entrepreneur. You've done several companies and yeah. then. You, you came into this market, you hadn't been in it before, you got yeah. this big relationship with Arista, which that's not an easy thing to do. That's one of the premier names in the space. Tell us how... Well, and they're not our only relationship Right, but, but, so, but tell us how you got that relationship, how you got involved in this market. So, so I actually, for my sins, you know, I really like enterprise infrastructure. And I think it's a, a really cool area of technology, especially because you have, you, you have technologies that become widely distributed and once they're widely distributed they they can they can become very static over time and so you get these big areas of kind of lack of innovation and then sort of sea change innovation and i was coming from email which is one of the oldest technologies <laughs> on the internet right and so so enterprise infrastructure i think is really cool and I was looking, so I also have a background in data analytics. I started my career in pharmaceuticals, and so I was looking at big data. Mm -hmm. And so you read, okay, everything's moving to the cloud, and it's going to be driven by data. And this idea of driven by data, I was, so I was looking at infrastructure for big data and saying, you know, there's going to be a lot of this rolled out. And so when I got, when I got into looking at, I was actually looking at building like a, a green plum, network storage compute, all the hardware, software management layer. And I had a couple of guys and we were working on the software management layer and we started with the network. And we were working with Arista and Corate and a couple of big Wall Street banks. And the other thing I like to do is very early collaborate with you know, thought leading customers. And if you look at financial institutions in particular, they're usually early adopters of technology. They identify the gaps and they try to find where people can innovate. So t tell us what these early adopters are doing, because you, yeah. you have an analytics platform, and obviously yeah. there's all sorts of different applications and, and uh, use cases for that. Tell us what some of the more cutting edge use well, cases so are for that technology. For, for us, and what makes us different is we're, we're analytics plus, you know, analytics plus configuration, or analytics plus change. Mm -hmm. And so we, we consider You're adaptive. Would you we say consider you're... ourselves an automation system, mm -hmm. and in networking, in in other areas of technology, this is where not coming from networking is interesting. In other areas of technology, systems, they have this concept of data-driven systems, right? Data-driven content, data-driven ads, data-driven. And in the network, it's a one area, it's not data-driven data at all. I've got monitoring over here, and I've got people that pick up and manage what mm -hmm. happens when I see something. Mm -hmm. And I've got change management over here, I've got configuration over here. And so the idea of a data-driven network where you know, you're pulling, you're extracting real-time data out of the network, and if you want to make changes on the network, mm -hmm. you want to do positive things like you know, add new capacity or add new software, or you want to respond to events, like I see congestion, absolutely, what, should, absolutely. what should the network be doing? In order to do that in an automated way, you need to pull together the information mm -hmm. about not only the network, but what's attached to it, mm -hmm. what's up sure. the stack from it. And so that's the piece that's missing. Yeah, so, I just uh, I just did a whole research report on this very topic actually, I, and and Vinod Kozla was speaking this morning mm -hmm. um, about automation and adaptive yeah. networks, pointing out that we're not really in an adaptive world. And the analogy he used, which uh, happened to be my same analogy, I don't know if he stole it from me, but um, air, airplanes, right? So mm -hmm. you, if you look at um, if you go into an airplane, you know 
95 percent of the flight is automated. The the, the pilots mm -hmm. are, are just drinking coffee, right. hopefully right. watching you know right. the, this instrumentation. They might land manually, yeah. but the, the the plane is fully capable of landing itself. And um, this doesn't happen in networks today. It's it's still a manually yes. driven world. So you are you're you're. The role autopilot. is to be the autopilot for the network. The but to tell me, do you ha can you Thank have you a, for that tagline? Yeah. Do you have a, uh, a customer use case you can talk about? So there are quite there are a number of them, mm -hmm. right? And so I'll give you a simple use case, and then I'll give you a more sophisticated use case. So take a simple use case today, where I have a manually operated network, and seventy percent of the outages on my network are caused by mistakes or misjudgments in manual operation. Mm -hmm. So I'm typos. They could be typos. <laughs> they could be. I thought I needed this snippet, and it was that snippet, or I didn't think this would affect that. But mm -hmm. actually, mm -hmm. so um, so one of the very basic use cases that we can do before we do anything risky is come in and interact programmatically with the network. So I'm gonna I'm gonna start getting real time data, which. The traditional polling method doesn't give me. So the old way of talking to these network appliances, you know, polling the network, I've got 10 minutes old data. No, I need, I need data that's a couple of seconds old. Mm -hmm. So I get this real-time data, and I'm going to take it from the physical network. If I've got a logical network, if I've got a virtualized network, I'm going to take that data. I'm going to take data from everything that's attached and its status and put Twitter. all that. Maybe, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Whoever's tweeting, I'm going to take all that data, and then when somebody, then I'm going to, I'm going to allow operators to write policies or logic that say how should the network be, how does each device need to be, what does the system need to look like, and then when somebody goes to implement a change, I'm going to run checks, and you know what? If that shouldn't be happening, I'm not going to let it happen. Mm -hmm. So that's a basic use case. We think of this like guardrails. And you want to set up those guardrails, that's this data-driven logic, and then that's going to allow you to do more sophisticated things. Mm -hmm. So one of the biggest preventable causes of congestion on a network, and congestion is where you got too much traffic, it's just like traffic. Mm -hmm. One of the biggest preventable causes of congestion on the network is in this new virtualized world that, that I'm able to create, I can move things around. And mm -hmm. I can move an application from here to here because I think it's a good idea. And when I do that, I take a whole bunch of bandwidth and I can make congestion. And I can actually interfere with applications that are operating. Sure, so what? how, can, how can we trust that Stateless is going to do this better than, say, Cisco or, or Juniper? Because you would think that um, the, the bigger players have already are already working on stuff like this. What when you go to a big customer like Verizon or or, or a big bank, you said you work at the banks, yeah, J.P. Morgan. And, and how do you convince them that, yeah. that, that a little startup is is the way to go? Well, one of the things about this is that it is it requires combining different ways of thinking. So you have to take a deep understanding of the way networks operate in their hardware and these new network models. And you're going to combine it with a, a software architecture and a data architecture that does look like Twitter. Mm -hmm. So our system actually looks more like Twitter than any traditional networking system. Mm -hmm. And so when, you, when we come to customers, they realize, OK, this is the innovation. It's not just an innovation in technology. It's an innovation in mindset. And we, there's, there's more recognition that that innovation of mindset is more likely to come from a startup. And we actually mm -hmm. see the companies that we work with, banks and service providers, they're setting up little teeny mini startups in Palo Alto. You know, their own little startups to try to emulate that. Mm -hmm. Because you need, you need this sort of, you know, uh, what's what I'm looking for? Um, radical thinking or this sort of, you know, Willingness to be a rebel and say no, you can, you can use a Mongo database on a network management system, or no, you can use a bunch of open snippets to to do something, and so it's different. So so I think there's a lot more acceptance now than there used to be of a startup doing that. It helps in our case that you know we're walking into a gap where we come in with use cases that are very pressing, 
for what people want to do. Sorry, I can John, keep talking John, all John, you got you got a <laughs> comment on that? I can tell. <laughs> no, we're just keeping just much keeping an eye on the clock, making okay, sure we don't yeah, get yeah, left yeah. in the dark here. Sorry, um, I'm no, supposed no. to talk in sound bites, aren't I? No, no, no. Don't be yourself. It's the Cube, very, okay. very friendly place. All right. Um, I want to get your take on the show here, obviously, as an entrepreneur. Yeah. You got to get a position in there, find a little beachhead. The focus is critical. You got a nice focus. Um, share with the folks out there, what is this show about? Why is the opportunity? And compare and contrast that to the big mega trends of what's going on in cloud. You mean the show, the ONS yeah, what's show? What's going on here at ONS? Mm -hmm. Why is this show important? And compare this networking future to what's going on in the cloud and what are the big things people should pay attention to? Well, I think the Open Networking Summit and the Open Networking Ideas in general are really important for people who care about cloud and for people who care about IT and business systems. Uh, they're really important because the network has been the bottleneck. And now you have in networking this revolution that's coming and this technology transformation and you, and you have an industry that's been pent up. So, so the open movement, I think, is is you know where things end up, and the network becomes as dynamic and as fluid and as collaborative as other areas in the cloud have been. So, I think everyone in the cloud space should be paying attention to what's happening in networking. And it sounds like, you know, with Vinod's comments and others' comments, that that they are. There's radical change coming. Innovation. Uh, Kelly, great to have you on theCUBE. It's a pleasure to have you. You're awesome, thought leader, great, and, and the founder of a company, which is amazing, which is, you know, it's, as, as founders, we all know how hard it is <laughs> to build a company. <laughs> so share with the folks, really, on, on the last word here. What's going on with the company? Your goals for the next year? What are you looking for? You're going to hire? Are uh, you looking for funding? Just give a quick update on the state of the company, of stateless networks. Give this, the update on the state of the stateless networks. Uh, state of stateless networks, so we're, um, we're in growth mode, so we are definitely hiring, and we're especially looking for people who are very passionate and very innovative minded in, in, in engineering. But at, for the company, we're really looking to establish ourselves as a dominant force here in providing this essential layer in the network and helping to drive people to think about how networks operate in, in terms of the feedback that they require and the new operating models which say the networks are the networks are going to be comprised of software and they should be driven by software. So we're really excited to spread that message. We're really excited to be here with you guys in the Cube. I'm sorry I missed you last time. This format is fantastic. It's we love really, the Cube. really cool. We love yeah. having you on and again sharing yeah. your information and what you're doing to the crowd. We love that's what the Cube's all about. Big, big place for ideas to grow and, and have great smart tech athletes here. This is theCUBE, where we'll be right back with our next guest. We are live in Silicon Valley for the ONS Summit, the future of networking, impacting cloud, software driving software networks, code writing code, infrastructure as code. You call it what you want, it's a revolution. We're here, it's theCUBE, we'll be right back.